Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Tarr. I am an iOS engineer and today is day 15 of Algorithm to Swift. We've officially made it to the halfway mark. I actually may extend this, extend uh, Algorithm to Swift longer, depending upon the responses I get. But needless, needless to say, we're here. We're at the halfway mark. We've made it, okay? <laughs> so uh, today we're going to be doing a problem involving prime numbers. We're going to create a problem, create a function, excuse me, to solve the problem. We're going to um, create a function that detects whether a number is prime, okay? And we're gonna, um, there, there are a lot of different approaches to this problem, but there are only f a few sophisticated approaches, and we're gonna be discussing a brute force approach that's more, um, that's less efficient, and we're gonna discuss a sophisticated approach that is more efficient. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so our problem states, write a function that accepts an integer as its parameter and returns true if the number is prime. We have some test cases here. The number 17 should return true, 23 should return true, 8 should return false, and 12 should return false, obviously because they're even numbers. And the number 10,903 should return true, okay? So we're gonna start with a very brute force approach. Computationally expensive, but valid solution. We're gonna pass in a number. And then we're gonna check to see if that number is greater than or equal to two, because two is the lowest prime number that exists, at least to my knowledge. <laughs> um, and if it's less than two, we're gonna return false. Then we're gonna check if the number is not equal to two. And if it is equal to two, if two is a number that's passed in, then we just return true immediately, so we don't have to do a lot of work. Then we're going to do a for loop for i and 2 up into the number. If the number is divisible by i evenly, by, the, by any number evenly up into uh, itself, we're going to return false. Because that means that it's not a prime number, and we found we find that it's evenly divisible. And if it is, and if we get past all the numbers, from two to uh, the number itself, and we don't find any evenly divisible numbers, we're gonna return true because it's a prime number, okay? So that's all we need to do for that. Uh, for this approach, we can just pass in 17, and that returns true. In fact, sorry, let me print out uh, the numbers. 17 returns true, I had to do it 15 times. 23 returns true 21 times. 8 returns uh, false, of course, because it's even. 12 returns, returns false. Okay. 10,903. Uh, should return true, but you see that you see how many times uh, it's going through this for loop. It's counting. Um, these are all the searches that it's doing. So it had to search ten thousand nine hundred and one times in order to find out that this is indeed a prime number. Okay, so this approach uh, for small numbers is you know feasible. For large numbers, it's grossly inefficient time complexity-wise. It's valid, it works, it just is very, it's very tasking for the computer to do, okay? So what can we do to make this algorithm work better? Well, if we understand the way square roots work and the way uh, numbers are, um, the relationship between numbers and a square root, then we can make this problem very, very efficient using the same, the same approach, okay? So we know that, uh, no two numbers um, can be greater than the square root of a particular number in order for it to even be equal to the number itself, okay? So for instance, if we're dealing with a number like 144, okay? We know that any number times a number has to be less than 12. So either one of those numbers has to be either 12 or less than 12, okay? Like both numbers cannot be greater than 12. Otherwise, it's the number, the resulting answer is gonna be greater than 144. 13 times 13 would not be, would, would, it's gonna be greater than 144. Uh, 14 times 14, 14 times 13, any number that's greater than uh, 12 
is going to be greater than 144. Okay. Um, so with uh, uh, understanding understanding that logic, we can greatly greatly dramatically reduce our search time by comparing the number the for loop the, um, using the for loop the number that we compare our search index up to the square root of the actual number that's passed in. So we could do something like this, call this square root equal to integer ceiling square root double and number that's passed in. Okay. Um, and then we just we just do a for loop up into the square root. So instead of doing all these searches for up to 10,903, our search time is dramatically reduced. So it's not going to be 10,901 times. Um, if our compiler likes us tonight, tonight. <laughs> it's going to be 105 times, 104 times, excuse me. So that's a dramatic, dramatic decrease from 10,901 times, 10,901 searches to 104 searches. And that still gives us the same result. True, you know. Um, if we were to do like 17, it only has to do it five times. If we do 23, compared to the 21 times we saw earlier, it only has to do it five, it only has to um, do this four times. So uh, that's like, five times less than the original search, more than five times less than the original search. You know, if we do like a random, like uh, 20,063, we still get a very, very low search time, okay? Um, comparatively, if we were to uh, do, um, do it the, the old-fashioned way we were doing it before. Let's not do 60,000, that's a rather large number. Let's do 20,063, okay? We do uh, that. You'll see how many searches we have to do. We have to do 20,061 searches in order for us to realize and validate that this number is a prime number. So that's a great, great time difference between it being computationally expensive versus computationally inexpensive. Um, using understanding uh, square roots and how they relate to numbers dramatically helps us reduce our search time, 20,062 times actually, okay? So guys, let me know what you think of this problem. Let me know if this problem helps you in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, I believe this problem is uh, an efficient solution to this problem. I've seen this come up in a number, a number of interviews. So uh, be prepared uh, to use uh, this more sophisticated approach to solve a problem um, that is uh, rather daunting in terms of time complexity if you do it old-fashioned way. Thanks again, guys. Have a good night.